one more word, one more word for right now on this theme of spiritual Egypt. Since we've asked the question and hopefully have answered this question sufficiently for those who are spiritually mature to receive it. Because some would say you give them all the facts, the evidence. Like, I still don't understand. I don't understand. You have to recognize they have no standing. They have no standing in truth. They're too invested. They have to divest from the lies that they have been led to believe. When we speak about this great city, now in Revelation 11 and 8, this great city is spiritually called and is spiritually known as uh, Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified in the correct translation of that verse it says our lord but actually we're their lord right speaking of the two witnesses now what's interesting about the spiritual egypt and we've explained it hopefully um in the previous vid um is america's spiritual egypt here i want to say that when we look at sodom we said it's not a it's not just localized right it's not localized to a particular city like all the people who are in the under the burdens and the bondage in this, quote, spiritual Egypt and spiritual Sodom might not live physically, right? Because we're speaking about spiritual wickedness. They might not live physically in Egypt and Sodom, right? So to speak. But if we were to localize, right, some key nodes, some nodes along this um hidden confusion and this uh, secret chaos that's to define mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is that great city, right? Recall also and note this also that money, right? Money rather, or the love of money, money is a very key factor, but money, this money, this, it's, it's, it's a spirit. It's, it's a thought in your mind. If everyone woke up, you know, tomorrow and said to themselves, you know, this, this is garbage, right? There would be a change, but too many people are too deeply, they're in too deep, right? They're in too deep. It's only the blood of the black Christ, you know what I mean? That will save them, but they have to receive that. That's up to them, right? The almighty is not going to force salvation on anyone. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, it's, it's up to you to choose, Right? It's about choice, the choice factor. You either can do whatever you will and think that's some law. That is a law of death. That's the law of the of of the beast of the bottomless pit. Or you can do the will of the Almighty, right? But you must learn the will of the Almighty. His will is for you to receive his son, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos in spirit and in truth, to come out of disorientated Christianity and to be reorientated to the truth, right? And if you can't get the so-called physical facts, right, then the spiritual facts definitely are in very much question, you know? Like, so if one can't, they say, well, what race Christ is or what color he is, it doesn't matter what color Jesus is. That's nonsense. That's blindness. The God of this world has blinded them. And the God of this world uses this talisman right here to great effect, right? To great effect. You see it? It's right there. You see the eyes looking at you, but when you see it, you really don't see it in its true context. It's, it sees you as a slave, but you don't recognize it as the, as, as, as that great city. You don't see this great city, right? This great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. But then we thought about it. We said, well, isn't it interesting? Sodom, sodomy, and there's a lot of sodomy and everything going on. And people often kind of focus on that, but that is very kind of overt for us to recognize. A lot of folks are, as they call it, out of the closet now. Now everything is about so-called homosexuality is being legalized. So forth and so on. People say, well, well, this is a new normal. This is a new normal. It's new times, so forth and so on, right? So that's one level of this great city. And then you have the Egypt part, right? And it's interesting that on the dollar bill, right, is found this particular symbol. Then in going over Exodus, everybody says, well, the Israelites were enslaved, slaves, slaves. The Exodus, it doesn't use that sort of language. They were in bondage. They were in a bond age. 
they were in a, a time where human beings were treated as stocks and bonds. Therefore, they were in the stockade, right? <laughs> and in bondage, right? But it also points out burdens, burdens. That's a key word, burdens, right? Most folks will think of the burdens as, well, are you carrying something heavy on your back? And, you know, you're carrying, you know, big, 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 heavy sacks or something, you know, sacks of Babylon shit or something like that. So that's it, the heavy burdens. But there's also Man is a trifold entity. Man is a trifold being. Man is a tripartite being, right? Because Selassie, I, God created man in his image and after his likeness. So man has spirit, soul, and body. Most folks will just look at the body level, right? Body level. Concerning spirituality, most people will say, well, it doesn't matter what race Christ is. Let's get into the spirit and let's get into the, you know, let's get into the spirit part of it. But if you can't recognize the first facts as first, you've already been deceived when you enter into the spirit. You see what I'm saying? But now when we look at the nature of man, man is not just enslaved. They take the shackles off of the hands and the feet. Like I and I and people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, they took the shackles, the chains off of their hands and their feet, but it's still on their hearts and their minds. And their hearts and their minds are still under the burdens, the worries, the frets and the debts that they look at the dollar bill and, and this, this, this so-called currency. Isn't that interesting? They call it currency. Currency is energy, right? A current. Right. So so those who have this as the greatest God, they, they, many people wouldn't even call it a God. They, they, no, dollar is not a God. We just need we just really need money. Everything that we need to do as human people, if you come to folks say we need to do such and such. The first thing that's almost always on people's mind, we need money. We need money. We need money. It's almost like in, in, in a spiritual community where they say, okay, we got to pray on this. But instead they say, we need money. We need money. We need money. It's kind of like a go-to. It's, it's the first go-to for those who are under, just like the, the Hebrews were, just like the children of Israel were, right? Just like I and I ancestors and I and I people were, we now see this has gone beyond just the Jews or the blacks. The black people being enslaved right now to the whole world is enslaved. And so very interesting. If you start to check out how America went from this one nation over on the side of the north, right now to be running everything around the world. Even when you look at the fact when the slaves were the blacks who were enslaved, the enslaved Hebrews, black people were freed, so-called allegedly, ostensibly from the legal um, slavery. People say, well, it wasn't really legal. So it was illegal. It was a legal thing they're doing. Either, either it's legal or it's I illegal. Either make the tree good and the fruit good or the tree bad and the fruit bad. So which one was it? Was slavery legal? Was the enslavement of the Hebrews, the black people, right? In this great city, was it legal or was it illegal? That's the question we have to ask. Now, if it was legal, okay, Lincoln, freed or emancipated, freed them from the hand. That means freed. He took the hands off of them, right? And now he put them under this spiritual system. Not he so much, really. He, Satan, the devil, behind the system of things. You see, it's really Satan I that you see in the triangle right there, right? You really see Satan. And it's interesting to use a triangle too. Remember, man is tripartite, spirit, soul, and body. So if you see a man in chains and everything and you say oh, and chains on his hand and his feet, you say, oh, free him up. But even if you take the chains off his hands and the, his feet, have you taken the chains off of his heart and his mind? When then you put this symbol and this consciousness, this 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 spirituality in front of him. Now he has a not a new master. Right. But now it's on another level. It's on a spiritual level. It's on a psychological level. It's on a conscious level. It is not seen. Right. It is therefore hidden. It is therefore a mystery. It's a mysterious confusion and chaos that people are in. Right. People say, well, why I don't feel people can't even enjoy life no more. You know, they can't even enjoy God's, God's creation. 
You know, everything is like, look at that new car. Look at that new piece of fabric. Look at that new device somebody created. Wow, that's wonderful. My cell phone is my life. Can you imagine? Right? And, 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 but, but what's the currency that connects all these things? It's the love of money. Right? It's the love of money, which is the root of all kind of evil. See, people are in so much love with money that even though money as a currency could answer certain earthly, worldly purposes, they can't even answer these purposes anymore. Right? You know, they can't even, even with the money, they can't and you know, they can't prolong their life. They can't really, money doesn't really buy happiness. People think it does. If I had money, I'll be happy. See, see, that's, that's what the slave is thinking. <laughs> if he has money, his spiritual attitude would change, yet he cannot recognize that he's in a spiritual slavery to begin with. So you can't recognize you in a spiritual slave. If you say this, then people get offended because the principle is the truth is an offense, but it is not a sin. But if you look at Sodom and Egypt very carefully, it really corresponds to D.C. and L.A. They put out this vibe. They put out this vibe greatly, you know, the media. You know, you have L.A. They put out the vibe of the sodomy, right? Sodomy is all of it in all of its forms. You understand? Sodomy is more than just the physical, you know, the physical form that we, um, you know, like, you know, batiboyism and sodomy and abomination on that particular, the, the new normal. Let's just call it what they call the new normal, you know, change of laws and times. Now this was illegal. Now it's legal. You understand? Wow. Just like that. You understand? Are these people gods? No, they're just regular people. We vote for them. Yeah, right. There's something hidden. There's something secret. There's something behind all of this. Oh, we just need just to make money and just pay our bail. I mean, bail. I mean, bill. You know, we need to pay bail. You understand? Bail. And it's something when they arrest you, you have to pay bail. Right? Bail. You know, bail. You know, bail and the dragon. You have to pay, pay your bail. And the dragon says, okay, um, you're free. <laughs> But you have to show up at court at such and such. And then we, we, we deal with this particular case wh where you might have to do time, right? Laws and time, laws and time. 